Alrighty, first story comes from Sky News, uh, news from the sky. Uh, British fintech unicorn Revolut wins a banking license. Uh, Revolut secured a European banking license from authorities in Lithuania, allowing them to start offering current accounts and loans across the EU from early next year. Their initial focus is apparently on Lithuania, where it has about 150,000 customers before expanding into larger markets, including the UK, France, and Poland next year. However, it plans to offer full banking services in its home market could be delayed in the event of a disorderly Brexit if financial firms lose the right to serve retail customers on licenses granted in the rest of the EU. Revolut said it was preparing to apply for a separate UK banking license regardless of the outcome of Brexit and has previously said it will also seek a Luxembourg e-money license. Wow, is this a big deal? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Pretty, should we I'm just going to put it out there. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's one step closer to or Nikolai's kind of uh, his, his dream, his North Star, which is basically the Amazon of banking, right? You know, and this is the, the door opening moment for them to then actually go and diversify what they're offering. So I think for them, they're looking to what, try and move everybody off the prepay cards to the actual, uh, actual accounts. Um, and that could be quite an interesting move to see happen over the next 12 months. It was, I mean, it was quite successful for Monzo. Yeah. You know, I think they managed to pull, what, 94% of the customers over? So yeah, it's it's a big step, big move. Um, it can be done. Uh, it's just uh, it's interesting that the license is from Lithuania in the first instance. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of people, I think, picking up on the fact that it was Lithuania. So Lithuania have done a lot to try and bring in the fintech. They're really keen to put, to posit themselves as a a strong regulatory presence in in that in that space. But I think there will be some skepticism around the strength of the program there. I think generally, I mean, given what I do, sorry to be the kind of compliance geek here, but there is an, an interesting point around. This is an interesting year that for them to do this where they're going to have to completely uplift all of their onboarding, their KYC, their due diligence, their monitoring, coming off the back of what they experienced this year with the FCA, three compliance offices in a year. It's going to be interesting to see how they handle this. I'm sure they'll handle it in a, in a kind of unique tech-focused way, but it, it'll be interesting. It's a pragmatic move, and, and Nikolai has gotten us used to pragmatic moves. Um, Lithuania positioned themselves to make it easy to sort of have a f- foot footprint small and lie and expand it is a transactional relationship that may or may not be allowed to stand from an eu perspective because there are some challenges with with the program from a from an eu governance perspective that have already been voiced but from from revolut's point of view they've done the obvious thing they've done the clever thing pursuing parallel licenses in other jurisdictions particularly the uk makes imminent sense and, and across eastern europe you see a, a strong presence of migrant work um both in an internal and external a lot of companies base uh, sort of near shore development there there's a lot of people that sort of work in western europe from eastern europe and send money back home N- makes a lot of sense then that there would be a lot of users in lithuania and i think that's kind of one of the key things from you know is this regulatory arbitrage yes or no well no there's a solid user base there you can make a, a very solid argument to say no this is this is one of their core markets it would make sense that maybe they got past the post there first but this point about they also intend to seek licenses in the uk and luxembourg this could be the first of many for them. it makes a many interesting um sort of business question though because once you have a you're a bank in some jurisdictions but not necessarily in others in terms of how you choose to behave. Because technically, once you have the banking license in Lithuania, you could you could roll it out across the entire EEA right now. But it is clear that they don't intend to do that, and, and rightly so, because particularly with Brexit looming, quite a lot of people would be reluctant to, to make that move. But, but what does that mean in terms of running the business? You're going to have essentially two different businesses with different regulatory requirements, with different behaviors, adding strain to what has already been a a challenging growth period, um, they're taking on an extremely difficult internal governance challenge. They are, but they seem to be growing regardless, right? I mean, that was going to be my question. Do you think Brexit will screw them here? Or do you think that Brexit is just going to be another hurdle for a team that just keeps on marching forward, releasing new features and getting there somehow, some way? I think so. Um, If you look at the numbers right now, they're up to 1.8 million customers, six to 8,000 new ones a day diversifying geographically across Europe. Nikolai's been pretty staunch in terms of coming out in the, I think it was courts yesterday, just saying Brexit be damned. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Doesn't I, we, sound we, like him at all. Definitely does not, does it? Yeah. So yeah, I, I think for them, they'll just find it as a as something to try and get through. 
you know, the interesting one for me is actually going to be around deposit taking and their ability to do that and then actually go out and do what seems like they want to, which is go out and lend. So unless they actually find a way to find a wholesale lender, um, which wouldn't surprise me as well. So if they find a wholesale lender for them to then go out and use that for lending, that seems to be one of the key things that they're trying to unlock right now. Indeed, in a low interest rate environment, wholesale lending versus deposits, it's it's hard to say that if you're really, really good at buying wholesale lending and you've got the right treasury team, you could actually make that make sense. And so who who knows what comes next? They seem to be pushing for growth. Well, there's there's talk about this five hundred million pound uh, investment from SoftBank. Now, is that an investment or is that going to be used in terms of in different ways? So that's that, that that's one to watch. Ooh, starting a rumor. I like it. <laughs> Interesting speculation. Favorite kind of guest. There might be a very um, mundane challenge ahead of them, though, in in the sense that when the the Monzo switch switcheroo opportunity uh emerged every user had a moment of do i need another bank account and then it was like oh what the hell it's been a really good experience i'll press the button and i'll do three things that will take about a minute and a half and off i go um revolut with their growth and the challenges they've had both from some of the procedural um yeah. angles but also from a pure um like outages, um, support, there there may be quite a lot of reluctance to move away from the prepaid product just because of the, the smoothness of the experience is not quite there yet. The question is, will they let people keep the option and how long for? Because it's going to be you're... interesting. I think, sorry to interject that. I think given the issues that they've had around who they're issuing cards to, is it beyond the UK and how, how they've done that outside of the UK? Once they do start to uplift the standards to move on and to, up, to upgrade, I think that's how Monzo posited it at the time, to upgrade to the account. It will be interesting to see how many people choose to drop by the wayside or have to drop by the wayside. I think that's going to be indicative of just where their processes were in the first place. And the key thing for Revolut, I mean, I'm, I was a Revolut, I'm a Revolut user. I've lived in, in the US and Europe and the UK. So for me, it's perfect. I have everything there that I need and can input it and in, sorry, put cash in and get cash out very, very quickly. Um, the ease and flexibility of that is just works perfectly for me right now. Do I really want to have to go through a new experience? Even it, it would be relatively easy for me to do. Do I even want to do that? I, I have to be honest, I'm not even that sure. Now I've opened Monzo and I can, I've got Starling and I'm not getting the, the current account charge or the, sorry, the conversion charges. I'm unsure if I want to go through that process and it'll be interesting to see how many other people drop off when we don't really know how easy that onboarding would have been. And I think the lesson from Monzo's success at that is that if you make it feel less like converting and some big thing and more like, hey, you should do this. Hey, hey, why don't you do this? Hey, it's just a button. And then when you do it, it's actually really painless. Can they build that that crossover? I think it's going to be a really interesting point. Um, but I'm, I'm guessing they've thought about this a little bit. And, and, yeah, I mean, and the, an, the answer is they can, right? Yeah. Monzo did. Uh, it, it is possible. And... And if anything, the, the fact that it has been done previously gives quite a lot of pointers. But as it was to, done as in one. Done. It was done in one country, and yes. instead of across many markets. So there is a complexity here, and it was done with. Yes, they, they have the ability to make international payments, but it was really all cards driven. This is this is a more complex product with yeah. more pieces to it, um, more uh, offerings in terms of the savings. They've even got the cryptocurrency bit. There's like there's a lot more bits to the puzzle, but still, um, I wouldn't bet against them. All Our right, head uh, of marketing so is Australian, and she really had an issue when she was moving across on the Monzo. So the international element for her was a problem. And if the, you do have a, a more diverse market here, that could be an issue. I'll, I'll throw my hand in the ring. I'll convert. I'll convert my account the minute it's available. Alrighty, we'll we'll have to video that as like a sort of unboxing from Fintech Insider, (laughs) unboxing the conversion.